Hi there. Uh, this is Ron Collins again, and this is day five of my uh, little project to support my Kickstarter 575, which is a, a bit of an exploration of artificial art and the uh, science fictional haiku. <laughs> uh, and I've been, uh, I had decided that I was going to run this little project to uh, do a sidecar to talk about artificial intelligence in the fields of art. And today, I'm finally getting around to talking a little bit about uh, uh, ChatGPT and PseudoWrite and uh, things that directly affect writers. Uh, so much of the conversation has been uh, focused on art for many months. And uh, now GPT, uh, ChatGPT has, um, has reared its head and people are talking a lot about that. Um, this is a compendium video to a blog post, and I've put a whole bunch of thoughts <laughs> into my blog post, and I'll kind of leave that uh, to you to read or skim as far as you want, but I've thought around a whole lot of the economies of what it means to be a writer, independent and traditional uh, publisher, and fundamentally kind of bringing it down to a single point um, you know, I think at the end of the day, the question of whether the uh, artificial intelligence in the writer's field of telling stories um, ends up costing writers their careers is going to depend on readers. That <laughs> everything depends on readers, and, and that's, um, that's the, the bottom line um, as far as that goes. One of the thoughts that I didn't put into the blog post is uh, the aspect of being able to write something in the form of Ron Collins, right? If somebody were to, to create a um, chat GPT and train it up on all my stuff and then start writing uh, stories as if I would, um, you know, that's an interesting question. And if they marketed them as if they were written by Ron Collins, then that would be a forgery. <laughs> that's already a legal uh, problem. Uh, but if they write them in the style of Ron Collins, is that like Ron Collins writing in the style of Harlan Ellison? You know, I, that, that, uh, it, it'll be an interesting, uh, interesting question. What I wanted to do in this video, though, rather than kind of walk through uh, all the points of my blog post, is talk a little bit about my experience in playing with, in this case, ChatGPT. Um, I got interested in it because people are talking about it and I want to know what what it does and so um, yeah I've gotten into it and I've played with it a little bit. I don't think, um, one thing I did say in my post is I don't think it will help my workflow personally right now. It seems quite clunky. Uh, and the other aspect of it was, um, you know, I asked it to write me some stories and things like that and it was very generic. I mean, at, at this stage. Uh, it needs a whole lot of work <laughs> to ever get to the point. Uh, well, it needs a lot of work to get to the point where I personally would pick it up, read it, and go, "Oh, that is such an engrossing story." It feels like a sixth grader, you know, telling a telling a story. Um, but it's still good, and it's and it's cool. And when you're done with those stories, you go, "Oh, isn't that cute?" or or whatever. So, you know, it's coming. It's coming right along. Um, so I think the the main point there is is the conversations that people are having about it are completely valid, completely fair, and and should be had. Um, if you have not worked with GPT, uh, Chat GPT, or pseudo write, which is apparently more of a fiction thing, and I haven't touched on, um, then certainly I think that you you should do that. Uh, but I would strongly. I mean, obviously I wrote it, <laughs> so I would strongly suggest uh, that as you're thinking about and worrying about will, um, uh, will artificial intelligence create a problem for artistic people, um, I think the answer to those questions really lies in the way you look at the capitalism that is inherent in our worlds today and um, in how the consumer consumes things, um, and that will be different for all of the different types, right? Um, music is consumed out on the out on the waves and through the internet and 
And while you're working, and I mean, you can, uh, you have all sorts of different ways to run into and find new uh, music. Um, visual art is consumed in different ways, right? As I'm walking down the streets of Las Vegas, I see murals painted all over the place. Will, will robots paint? <laughs> will robots paint the murals? Uh, I, I don't know, right? Um, magazines, uh, television, uh, you know, CGI stuff, I mean, all sorts of things are, are going on. In the written world, uh, people think about the way human beings, who are the ones who pay for stuff, right? In this capitalistic world, human beings pay. If AI, if AI start to pay for my stuff, I guess maybe I'd be happy. <laughs> but it's going to be human beings that are paying, assuming there is money and, um, and so forth. And so I think that's um, the the fundamental thing that is going through my brain as I'm looking at each of the different areas is, okay, in this world, it really boils down to that question Rick Beto asked, who pays and who gets paid? Um, because otherwise we're talking about the aesthetics of art and what you feel about things, and there's lots of nuances of that that I've got into. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's the big, the big thing that is kind of driving a lot of my thought patterns, and you'll see that in the blog post that I, that I just put forward around writing. So anyway, have a great day. It looks like outside here, Martin Luther King Parade Day is coming on, so I'm going to be able to pay attention to that. Uh, I will see you tomorrow, and uh, like I say, have a great day.